guys! So this video is a question and answers video where I'm going to address some of the most frequently asked questions. I also did a little community post a little while ago asking you guys if you have any questions. So I've gone through it all and some of the questions that get asked the most, I'm going to address them in this video. And by the way, I can't talk properly, I've just had braces fitted and it's all blah, 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 blah. But anyway, into the video. And by the way, if you have any questions you want to ask, leave them in the comments down below and in the next question and answers video, I might address them. So one of the most popular questions that come up all the time is when will the monster truck be finished? So guys, I've just ordered all the parts to finish this build. They're being built as we speak. And once they're all done, they're going to be shipped over here to the UK. I'm getting everything from America. We're getting the axles, the engine, the shocks, everything and there's going to be a full build series of this truck on this channel and then we're going to plan to do some monster truck shows with it over here in the uk when i get my new backyard we're going to have a monster truck track in the back garden and then my ultimate dream is is to take it to america do monster jam and hopefully one day get invited to the world finals that's my biggest dream ever and here's a quick mock-up of what roughly it's going to look like this is actually the titan monster truck and i photoshopped it red and stuck a couple of graphics on there so if anybody's got some better graphics to put on there, uh, show them to me and they might go on there. I've had a lot of people asking about stickers and I've actually got a link down below. If you click on the merch store link, there's a link down below where you can get stickers, you can get hoodies, t-shirts, all that kind of stuff and I will be adding more stickers. There's only a few on there at the moment and I will be adding more hopefully this week if I get time. So Elite Recovery says, why do you speak in dollars when you're from the UK? So if we have a look at where all my viewers come from, as you can see, the majority of my viewers come from the USA and also the whole world knows what a US dollar is. Here in the UK, you know, as you can see, there's only 8.8% percent of viewers are from UK the rest of the world probably doesn't don't really know what a pound is another one of the most commonly asked questions is when will the project 200 mile an hour RC car be ready guys soon I've got the batteries on the way that's what I've been waiting for I've got all the other bits to build it I've got some new tires coming for the high speed ones the main reason what's holding us back is the bad British weather at the moment it's winter here the roads are wet it's cold come the summer guys hopefully we're gonna get this thing finished. And hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we should have it enough so that it drives and we can test it. And then, you know, come the summer, then we can take it out and give it some proper serious attempts. Sam Overton says, can you really make a hundred grand a year selling on eBay? Yes, you absolutely can. I'm not saying you will, um, but it is definitely possible. You know, when you wanna to get to a certain goal, it takes dedication, it takes learning, and then it takes hard work and smart work to get to your goal. So it's absolutely possible. I've got many people in my eBay courses making a ton of cash, making thousands every month. I've even had a testimonial earlier on today with a guy making, you know, guy on the course uh, who made around about $40,000 worth of sales in one week, just in seven days. And about 50% of that is in profit. Casey says, why do you like remote control stuff? Uh, not being mean, just wondering. Um, I just love RCs. I've always loved RCs ever since I was a kid. My granddad originally bought me a Nico RC car and um, that's kind of where the bug started. And then I got my first hobby grade RC car, which was a Tamiya Manta Ray when I was around about 10 years old. And then it kind of all escalated from there. And then I sort of fell into the YouTube game doing more RC cars. You know, and the other thing is, you know, my main passion is actually real cars, you know, real monster trucks, uh, proper cars, Land Rovers, Lambos, uh, classic cars, all that sort of stuff. But the trouble is, it's a lot more difficult to make content. RC cars are easy. You can buy a whole load of RC cars for the same price as just one normal car. Uh, you can get a whole load of different content out there. It's a lot easier wrenching on them. You know, when you're wrenching on a, on a real car, you're laying on your back, you're lifting all this heavy stuff, you're getting greasy, you know, working on, on an RC car compared to that is easy. And you guys seem to like watching it. So, um, you know, I love RC cars, so why not make RC car videos? So a lot of people here asking about not wearing masks and is there no lockdown in my area and, and you're a fool for not wearing masks and blah, 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 blah. Well, the thing is, here in the UK, you do not need to wear masks outdoors. Also, a lot of the videos, they were filmed when it wasn't locked down. So, you know, I've got videos that were filmed months ago, and, um, you know, I'm releasing them now. You know, I kind of planned ahead, so I've got a load of videos in the bank. Also, you're allowed to go out to work. You're allowed to go out for work purposes. Uh, YouTube is part of my business. I pay taxes on all my YouTube earnings. So YouTube is a job. It's a business. So that permits me to go out and film and make videos because it's for work purposes. And I'll see people complaining, saying, blah, 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 but it's not essential, blah, 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 blah. Well, look at it this way. 
you know, you're allowed to go out and exercise, you're allowed to go to the shops, and some people take full advantage of that, and they're exercising all the time, exercising, they're out everywhere, they're all over the place, they're going to work, they're going on public transport, they're mixing with people on the trains, the undergrounds, the buses, uh, and then they're going to the shops every day on top of that, and, and then there's me that doesn't do any of that, and every now and then goes out with an RC car in the middle of no one, middle of nowhere, fully legally, not causing any harm. Yet there's still some people that want to cause a stink. Do you know what? Think what you like. I don't care. I'm going to carry on. The dude says, not dirt cheap. I guess if you're rich, uh, come on, clickbait. Prices are all relative. So when I say something like, this is dirt cheap, compared to this, it is dirt cheap. You know, just like a Rolls Royce. You know, $50,000 for a Rolls Royce maybe isn't cheap to you. But in the grand scheme of things, it's a cheap Rolls Royce. So Mark asks, how do you find products to sell on eBay that aren't already too cheap, I think he's trying to get at. Uh, the thing is, um, obviously you want to buy products as cheap as you possibly can and you want to sell them on at a profit. Uh, but you don't want to be the cheapest. If you're selling the cheapest possible, then you're not going to really make any money because you're competing with everybody else and you're just going to go cheaper, the next guy goes cheaper, he goes cheaper, you go cheaper. In the end, you're going to be selling it cheaper than cost and you're probably going to make a big loss. The idea is, is to sell better than your competition and then you can sell for more money and that's the key at making money on eBay. Make the best listings, do everything the best you can. In my course, I found 11 things that you have to do to get right to make your listing sell and then you can sell at a higher price than your competition and then you can make a ton of cash on eBay. If you're just trying to be the cheapest, you're going to be out of business in no time. So we've got a few people asking for future plans on the Lamborghini and on the Land Rover. So Land Rover, pitch black so you can't see it out here. Short term, I want to fit a better suspension kit and a roll cage. Long term, I might turn it into something cool with a big Chevy V8 engine in it or something like that. Long travel suspension and turn it into something crazy. But that's not going to be just yet. We've got to find a new property first, have a nice shop, and hopefully then I can have it in the corner somewhere and I can work on it bit by bit. We can turn Andy the Landy into something really cool. As for the Lambo, I'm planning to fit a VF engineering supercharger in there that's going to put it up to about 850 horsepower. Maybe lower the suspension a little bit. And also really tempted to wrap it like something really standy outy. I don't know. I quite like this colour. But then this little colour here would look really cool too. I'll get a ton of comments with people saying they get these fake ads popping up on my YouTube channel and they see it all over Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram, all over the place. And basically, they're stealing my videos and other people's videos as well, like RC Sparks and CCXRC. They're stealing our videos and they're turn turning them into an ad. And they're advertising things like the Raminator, which is like a $3,000 RC car. And they're, and they're advertising it for like $20 and stuff like that. Obviously, guys, you're not going to get it. Tom Lee RC actually went and bought one of these things just to make a video about it and then ended, ended up getting like a, a cheap like car probably worth a couple of dollars. So guys, when you see these ads, do not buy them. You know, you're, you're going to get scammed. You're going to be out of pocket. And, you know, I've said to you guys before I made a community post and said, guys, please, when you see these ads, report it to, uh, to YouTube, report it to Facebook, get these ads off the platform. And it doesn't seem to work. These ads just, you know, as soon as they come down, they're all just popping back up again and there's more and more and more. So the only solution that I can think of is just click on that ad. Every time you click on the ad, it, it, it means I have to pay money. So we hit them where it hurts in their wallet and hopefully eventually they're gonna realize that it's costing them more money in ads than, than what they're, they're making in their scams. So that's the only thing that I can think of of how we can combat it. If you've got any better ideas, let me know. Sharon says, how long does it take you to do one video? Well, that kind of varies greatly. Some videos, I can sort of film it in a couple of hours and edit it in a couple of hours and it's done. But usually it takes me about one to two days uh, from planning, filming, editing, putting it out there, all that. Men says, do you think the X-Max is worth the price? Oh man, I would say the X-Max is worth every penny in my book it is the absolute ultimate rc car it can do everything it's fast it's durable you can bash the living hell out of it it can crawl easy to work on parts are cheap i know a lot of people complain about the price but if you compare the price compared to anything else out there i would say it's really good value i mean the only thing that kind of comes close to it is something like an armor outcast 8s but to get the sort of durability that the x max has you're going to be spending like double and it's still not going to be anywhere near as tough. So Julius says, why did you stop racing one ape scale buggies and people want to know if, if I'm going to go racing again? Uh, I prefer bashing. So, um, you know, when you go racing, it's a lot more serious. People are not really having a laugh. If you, if you start sort of clowning around, 
and you know accidentally bumping into people and stuff and people get the hump and they don't like it and for me I see supposed to be fun and you know I've been to many race clubs and they're not all like that but with some of them you get the guys that have spent a ton of cash and they're really good at racing and they all kind of sit together in their little clan and if you go up to them and talk to them about stuff that they don't want to know they're not all like that but you get some people like that there's, there's a lot of that in clubs a lot of moaning a lot of shouting a lot of telling off and a lot of the time you, you sort of have a look and you think you know what this doesn't even look like fun so i prefer just to go out with a whole bunch of mates with a whole bunch of friends go out and bash rc cars and have a laugh you know rc is all about fun so and for me bashing is where the fun's at so in the last q a which was roughly about eight months ago uh i kind of said that, you know i had enough money put aside to build the monster truck and um covid hit we couldn't really go out and film and i thought it would be better to put that money that i put aside for the monster truck uh, towards getting a bigger property so I can have a load of land and, and I can have my own RC tracks in the garden. Uh, I've been looking every single day, guys. I've been looking and looking and looking and there's just nothing perfect that's turned up. Yes, there's a load of stuff out there, but it's got to be right, you know. I need a, I need enough acreage. I want a nice house. I don't want a, a run-down farmhouse. Um, it's got to have a nice workshop on site. It has to be away from other houses because I'm going to make loads of noise. It's got to be in a location that I like. You know, when you see the house, it's got to look nice. It's got to feel homely. It's got to look good. So, you know, I'm looking every day. As soon as something comes up, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to have a look at it. And if I like it, we're going to go ahead and get a mortgage and buy it. Ook says, what are your plans for the Raminator? So I'm still waiting for the 80cc RC Max engine to come along for this. So once we get that, we're going to be putting that into there. I want to get some stronger steering servos for it. And also, I want to make my own exhaust system for it so we can have zoomy headers coming out of here. And one day, it would be really cool if I could find the same body shell for this that we're going to put on that, a Chevy C10, and make this one a replica of the big truck. Jonathan says, what happened to Pat? Why is he not in your videos anymore? Guys, it's a bit of a personal matter, really. You know, I'm not one to hang out dirty laundry. Um, you know... We don't agree on a few things. Uh, we tried to sort it out and we agreed uh, to go our separate ways. Dan says, what is your favourite RC car? So the Raminator is definitely my favourite RC car. It's the one that definitely puts the biggest smile on my face. But it is big, it's noisy, it's expensive and it's unpractical. So, you know, for an everyday RC car, and if I could only have one RC car and get rid of everything else, it would have to be the X-Max. Brandon says, what kind of YouTube videos do you watch? Other RC guys or completely different genre? Um, I do watch a few RC videos, you know, if it's about a product that I like, if it's maybe a product that I want to buy myself, uh, I might watch them, but usually I just watch business related videos. You know, I'm, I'm always one for learning. I've got all my books here in the background. I try and talk to as many different sort of business people as I possibly can. And, you know, at the same time in, in my downtime when I'm watching YouTube, that is mainly sort of business stuff that I watch, you know, how to grow a YouTube channel, how to grow your eBay, uh, how to run businesses, all, all that sort of stuff, personal development, personal growth, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Basically anything that's gonna be beneficial to my business. Nitro Mike says, what are your future plans to expand and freshen up the channel? I believe a lot of RC YouTubers, including myself, will eventually hit the point where you and the audience have seen and done it all. Um, I used to kind of think that, but you gotta kind of remember like, you know, yes, if you have only a couple of RC cars, every video is going to probably be the same. But, you know, you might lose a few viewers, but then where you lose a few, you, you kind of gain new ones. And for the new viewers that you get, it's all fresh and new content. And, um, you know, what, what I do, I like to do every video different if I can. So different products, different cars, different unboxings, different styles, different locations. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to introduce more sort of Lambo videos and Land Rover videos and monster truck videos. You know, my channel was never really made to be an RC channel. It's supposed to be whatever I'm into at the time. So, um, you know, whatever my hobbies are at the time, that's what I'm going to share on this channel. Lugie says, what is the best ESC in your opinion? So the best ESCs in my opinion are the Hobbywing Max series. They're relatively cheap, they're super reliable, and they've got quite a lot of power. Now the castles, they're going to give you a little bit more power, but they haven't quite got the reliability and they are more expensive. So it depends what you want. If you want power, go with a castle. If you want reliability, Hobbywing. I love them both, but for most cases, Hobbywing. Leonardo says, what passion 
is older, monster trucks or RC? Probably about the same. I've always loved cars that you can jump and fly through the air and do stunts with. I mean, as far back as I can remember, I've always loved cars, and especially cars with big wheels that you can jump. So Pax, uh, blah, 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 sorry, butchered your name. He said, when did you switch from the old RC controllers to the controllers of today, and which do you prefer? So I'm guessing by the old remote controls, I'm guessing you mean the ones that were kind of like stick. And that's how I started out with RC. And after a little while, all ready to run cars came with these wheel radios. And I used to take the wheel radio off and fit a stick radio and it, and it started to become a nuisance. So I got the hang of the wheel and I actually now I much prefer the wheel. It's a lot more practical. You can drive them one handed and they also look a lot cooler. Josh RCs, he says, Kev, can you prioritize on the real engine RC crawler? So here is the nitro engine in a crawler project. I cannot prioritise on it. You know, I haven't got the time to give it at the moment. I've got so many other projects going on that, you know, are a lot easier to do. This thing here, I've got to get on a lathe. I've got to start machining some things. I need to get a 3D printer, which I've ordered. And I will get on it. I'm going to do a few bits here and there. There will be a video once there's a video worth uploading, but I just cannot prioritise on it. You know, if I prioritised on it, I'd literally be on this thing for like a couple of weeks and not get any other videos done. Frankie's Journey says, Kevin, do you still have the eBay formula for sale? Yes, link down below. DGID says, are you ever going to go to America? Yes, I've been to America about four or five times. Uh, I do plan to go back at the moment. I'm fully work focused. The plan with the monster truck is, is to play with it a little bit here. My ultimate goal is, is to take it to America, do Monster Jam, and hopefully one day be invited to the world finals. That, that's my dream to take part in that. Pretty much Stock says, why do you like higher KV motors? The reason being is that they offer a little bit more performance and a little bit more top speed at the trade-off of it all getting hotter and maybe the reliability not being there, but I just like more power, so I like more KV. Faddy Paper says, will you ever make your own RC brand? Um, I've been thinking about it and I'm very tempted and I really want to do it. Trouble is, it's going to take a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication and a lot of time, what I haven't actually got at the moment. You know, I'm, I'm working full time, doing YouTube videos, selling on eBay. Uh, I really haven't got any free time left to think about anything else at the moment. I've got the monster truck build coming up. Uh, we've got the Lambo I want to modify, we've got modifications I want to do to the Land Rover. Uh, I just haven't got the time in my timetable to do it, but it's something that I would love to do possibly in the future. Noob FPV says, do you really make money from Bitcoin? You can do. I had a mining rig. Uh, I've got rid of it now uh, because it was more sort of hassle than what it's worth. And of course you can make money with Bitcoin. You know, the, the easiest way to make money with Bitcoin is to buy when it's low and sell it when it's high. And obviously it's a bit of a gamble. It's a bit of a guessing game. You've got to guess where the bottom is and you've got to guess where the top is. Oh, my only fan says, <laughs> I'm a fanboy. He says, what is the chassis plate on the bottom of your Limitless made of? Possibly a link. So I take it you're referring to this piece of plastic here that I sort of moulded to the shape to fit onto the bottom of this Armour Limitless. I have absolutely no idea what it is. I've got a sheet of it here. I got it from a friend that had it laying around and that's all I can tell you. No idea what it is. It's not Perspex because Perspex is really brittle and this isn't. Send it RC says build your monster truck so you can race it with Whistling Diesel. And I've also seen another couple of comments with people saying that Whistling Diesel's monster truck is going to be better. Uh, Better is a very subjective term. It's all different and it depends what purpose you're going to use it for. My monster truck is going to be a competition truck with loads of horsepower and crazy durables. You can jump it 40, 50 foot in the air. You can backflip it. You can roll it over. You can crash it and you can just pull it out and, and take it to the next event and just keep fixing it up again. Uh, Whistling Diesel's one is not a competition truck. It's going to obviously be bigger and a lot heavier. Obviously, it's going to be better for crushing stuff. Uh, so, you know, which is better? I kind of, I suppose it depends which one puts the biggest smile on your face. Oh, and a backflip and jump. Uh, Whistling Diesel probably wants to crush stuff. So, whichever one's better is whichever one puts the biggest smile on your face. Extreme RC says, have you ever considered getting a red cat? I personally prefer the, the more higher-end RC cars. And, you know, for me, if I'm going to spend my hard-earned cash on an RC car, then it has to be one of the higher-end ones. You know, there's, there's not really any use to me to buy like a red cat crawler when I've already got TRX4s that are better. Now, you know, I do do some of the cheaper cars, but these get sent to me for free. I'm not gonna turn down free cars. I still enjoy the cheaper cars. I still have fun with them. But when you've already got all the high end ones, it just makes no sense to go out and spend your money on the cheaper ones as well. So, you know, if Red Cat wanted to send me some cars, I'd happily review them. Or if you guys really request 
a lot of Red Cat stuff and I think it's worthwhile for the channel, then maybe I'll buy one. Brogan says, when is the underwater drone coming out? <laughs> there it is, look, hiding under there. It will come out again at some point. I just don't know when. We need to get the right weather and we've got to find the right lake. I'll definitely have to bring that out. But yeah, we've got to do that, hopefully this summer. George says, do you use WD-40 on all your plastics or just on the X-Max? So for those of you that don't know the WD-40 trick, you basically get some WD-40. I know it isn't, but just pretend for a minute. And then what you do, you just spray it over all of your plastics, especially the plastics that are likely to break. You leave it overnight, let the WD-40 soak into the plastic, then you give it a wipe over. And where the, where the WD-40 actually absorbs itself into the plastic, I know it's hard to believe, I didn't believe it at first, but it does, you try it. Some plastics are actually porous, so it won't work on plastics that aren't. But on plastics that are porous, it goes into the plastic, and it obviously must do something to it and make it more flexible, because I can... I've tested it on a couple of arms. I've got a standard X-Max arm, another one next to it that I've got WD-40 over it, and you can just feel it in your hand when you flex it, that the one with WD-40 in it is a lot more flexible. And guys, when I treat my plastics with WD-40, it takes such an amount of abuse, you're not gonna believe. It makes it so much stronger. I sometimes forget to do it, and I haven't actually done it for a while, and I haven't actually even got any anywhere. So I should get some and start doing it again, especially in the winter when we break a lot of stuff, like this one here, look. Maybe WD-40 would have saved it. But, you know, as I said, I don't know if it works on all plastics. I know it works on the X-Max. I haven't really tried it on any other brands. Uh, but saying that, Martin said he'd done it on the Creighton 8S. And, uh, well, Creighton 8S. And it made it a lot stronger. So, yep, I'm going to give it a go on some more RC cars soon. Modern HD boy says, Hey, Kev, was 2020 the worst year of your life? No, for me, I loved it. It's one of the best years of my life, you know. You've got to make the most of a situation. You know, when a situation sucks, you've got to try and flip it into a way that you can make the situation good. And I'll do that with everything. You know, it's not so much survival of the fittest, it's more survival of those that can adapt to, the, to their surroundings. So that is pretty much what I've done. And, you know, I've, got, I've accomplished quite a lot in 2020. I've had a lot of fun in 2020. And um, I think 2021 is going to be even better. So I get a lot of comments with people saying I should get rid of my iPhone and go back to Samsung. The trouble is, guys, with a Samsung, if you've got the one with the three lenses on the back, you've got one for zoom, one for normal, and one for wide angle. On the Samsung, they cannot do all the recording modes on all lenses. On the Apple, they can. So, for example, when I'm out bashing, Normal bashing, I like to record it in 60 frames per second because then if something happens, you have a cool crash or something, you can slow it down and the video is not jerky. The trouble is on the Samsung, it won't let you do that across all the lenses, which is why I've gone for the Apple. And I'm really happy with this phone. You know, the audio messes up sometimes. Uh, but for the most part, I'm really happy with it. I'm not an Apple fanboy. I'm not a Samsung fanboy. I get whatever product does what it has to do, whatever suits my needs. So if Tonka Toy come out with a phone that does a better camera, uh, than this, then I will get a Tonka Toy one. And a lot of people say, why don't you just get a dedicated camera? I've got a dedicated camera. It's the one that I'm filming on here. Trouble is, it's too big, it's too clunky, it's too heavy, and it's just too big to take out. You know, when I film RC cars, I clip the phone onto the controller, and to put a proper camera on there, it's not really possible. Molindo ZM blah blah butchered your name says, uh, when more vids on Overgear. So Overgear is a gaming channel that I made on the first lockdown. The idea was is that when we can't go out and play, I can still make uh, YouTube videos. Trouble is, I'm not really a gamer. It's not my passion. You know, I might turn the Xbox on once in a blue moon and have a quick little session on it. But it's definitely not a passion. It's not something that I do regularly. Uh, and, you know, I'd rather make videos based around something what I'm passionate about, like RC cars, real cars, monster trucks, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but with that said, Jake Billing, who is an English YouTuber and he's really good at computers, he's building me a new editing PC with all the bells and whistles. So um, once I get that computer, we're still waiting for parts. It should be here in a couple of months, I'm hoping. Uh, then I'm going to take the editing PC that I've got here home and I'm going to have a new computer here to edit on. And then when I'm at home, because, you know, I'm done here working. Oh, sorry, microphone. I'm done here working. I go home. You know, and if I've got a couple of hours at home where I'm not doing anything, I can fire up the computer, do a little bit of gaming on there, upload it onto YouTube, and if you guys like it, then great, and if you don't, then whatever. But anyway, there's a link to that gaming channel down below. It's called Overgear. Tom Lee RC says, have you got an off switch? <laughs> yes, see you later, bat. Oh, by the way, click on one of these videos here, and I'll see you over there in a minute, bat.